హలో ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు వివిధ్ కెమి యూట్యూబ్ ఛానల్ దిస్ ఈజ్ విద్యాశ్రీ ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో వి విల్ సాల్వ్ కేసెట్ టూ థౌజండ్ ఫోర్టీన్ కెమికల్ సైన్స్ క్వశ్చన్ పేపర్ సాల్వింగ్ ది ప్రీవియస్ ఇయర్స్ క్వశ్చన్ పేపర్ హెల్ప్స్ అస్ టు గెట్ అన్ ఐడియా ఆన్ హౌ ది క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆర్ ఫ్రేమ్డ్ ఆన్ అ పర్టికులర్ టాపిక్ దిస్ వీడియో విల్ ఆల్సో హెల్ప్ సిఎస్ఐఆర్ నెట్ అండ్ గేట్ యాస్పిరెంట్స్ particularly in this video i will be solving the physical chemistry part of paper 2 question paper of k set 2014 chemical science the first question is the zero point energy of an electron is equal to by solving schrodinger wave equation for an electron in a one dimensional box the energy of electron is given by en is equal to n square h square divided by 8 ml square where n is the energy level h is planck's constant m is mass of electron l is length of the box in the question it is asked to find the zero point energy for electron zero point energy is nothing but the energy in the lowest energy level for an electron lowest energy level is corresponding to n is equal to 1 therefore the zero point energy can be calculated by substituting n as 1. By substituting n as 1, the expression will become h square divided by 8 ml square. Where if you consider length of the box L is equal to A, you will get zero point energy as h square divided by 8 m A square. Looking into the four options, option C is h square divided by 8 m a square this is corresponding to the zero point energy of electron moving to the next question the question reads as such an acceptable wave function must be from the given four options we should find a suitable option in which wave function is acceptable for a wave function to be acceptable it should be satisfying the following conditions first condition is that the wave function should be finite and single valued second condition is wave function must be continuous and the third point the first derivative of the wave function must be continuous the fourth criteria for a wave function should be acceptable is the square integrability of the wave function must be finite now we will look into all four options and we will find out which satisfies all these four conditions for wave function to be acceptable by looking into option a we can see that the wave function to be acceptable is it is continuous it should have a continuous first derivative it should be single valued and it should be square integrable therefore option a is the right answer next question the molecular orbitals formed from two oneness atomic orbitals by symmetric mode of linear combination is called a sigma 1s b pi 1s c sigma star 1s d pi star 1s two atomic orbitals combine to form two molecular orbitals the molecular orbital with lower energy is bonding molecular orbital the other molecular orbital which is having higher energy is known as anti bonding molecular orbital bonding molecular orbital is formed by symmetric overlapping of the atomic orbitals whereas anti bonding molecular orbital is formed by asymmetric overlapping of atomic orbitals in the question it is asked about oneness atomic orbitals linear combination in the symmetric mode oneness atomic orbital are spherically symmetric and their linear combination in the symmetric mode that gives rise to sigma bonding molecular orbital therefore the bonding molecular orbital is formed it is sigma 1s therefore the right answer is option a sigma 1s moving to the next question the molecule of h2o belongs to the point group of option a d4 option b c3v option c c2 option d c2v water molecule is bent or v-shaped structure of water molecule can be written like this 
Now we will list the different symmetry elements that are present in water molecule. We have identity. Then if you imagine a line which is passing through the oxygen atom dividing the two hydrogen atoms. If you rotate water molecule about this axis upon two rotations you will get the identical configuration. Therefore we have a C2 axis of symmetry in water molecule. Now a plane passing through oxygen atom dividing the two hydrogens. There is a symmetry in the molecule on the either side. Therefore we can consider a vertical plane, sigma plane, the plane of symmetry that is present in water molecule. One more plane we imagine that is passing through all the three atoms. So we have two plane of symmetry 2 sigma v I can write. So these are the symmetry elements that are present in water molecule. All these symmetry elements that constitute C to V point group. Therefore water belongs to C to V point group hence the answer is option D C to V. Next question which of the molecules do not show vibrational absorption spectra? Option A carbon dioxide option B water Option C, benzene. Option D, nitrogen. For a molecule to exhibit vibrational spectroscopy, there should be change in its permanent dipole moment upon vibration. And we should remember that homonuclear diatomic molecules do not exhibit vibration spectra. This point we have to remember. This is very important. From the given four options, you can see nitrogen is homonuclear diatomic molecule that do not exhibit vibration spectra because this molecule do not have a permanent dipole moment. Therefore, the right option is option D. And the next question is, the property which is not intensive variable, option A, temperature, option B, pressure, option C, dielectric constant, option D, enthalpy. The properties of the system which do not depend on the amount of substance present in the system are called intensive property. Few examples for intensive property are temperature, refractive index, density. And those properties of the system which depends on the amount of substance present in the system are extensive property and a few examples are mass, volume, entropy, enthalpy. Among the given four options, Temperature is intensive property, pressure is intensive property, dielectric constant is intensive property, enthalpy is extensive property. Looking back to the question, the property which is not intensive variable, they have asked not intensive variable which means we have to search for an extensive property of the system. Among the given four options, option D enthalpy is extensive property. Therefore, the right answer is option D, enthalpy. Next question, Stirling's approximation is, from the given four options, we should find the correct approximation. Stirling's approximation is used to find the natural log of a factorial of a very large number. And the approximation is given in this way, lan x factorial is equal to x lan x minus 6. From the given four options, option A is the right answer. The next question, when one ampere current flows for one second through a conductor, this quantity of electricity is called option A, Faraday, option B, Coulomb, option C, EMF, option D, Ohm. Ohm is related to electrical resistance, EMF is related to electric potential, and Faraday is the amount of electric charge that is liberated in an electrolytic solution. Whereas here in the question they have asked 1 ampere current flows per second through a conductor. What is the electricity that is generated? So the right option is option B, Coulomb. Moving to the next question. The standard potential of CuC2 plus electrode is 0.2. 337 volt it corresponds to the reaction from the given four options we should find a suitable reaction that matches the given standard potential of the copper electrode 
the given electrode potential is 0.337 volt positive electrode potential means the given electrode potential is reduction potential corresponding to the copper electrode the reduction reaction can be written like this Cu2 plus gaining two electrons to form copper therefore the right answer is option C next question is the conversion of molecules of A and B follows a second order kinetics doubling the concentration of A will increase the rate of formation of B by a factor of option A2, option B4, option C half, option D 1 by 4. The given reaction is A is getting converted into B and this reaction follows a second order kinetics. Therefore, rate of the reaction is given by K into concentration of A squared. Now, let me denote this rate as R1. In the next, the concentration of A is doubled. I will write the rate as R2 K and concentration of A is doubled. I will write this as 2A squared. I can simplify this to obtain K into 4 into concentration of A squared which gives 4K into concentration of A square. Rate constant multiplied by concentration of A square is nothing but R1. So we get R2 is 4 times that of R1. Therefore, upon doubling the concentration of A, rate is increased by a factor of 4. Option B is the right answer. Moving to the next question. Which one of the following reaction is unimolecular? So, among the given four options, you are asked to find a unimolecular reaction. Checking with option 1, here you have two molecules of hydrogen iodide. So, this cannot be a unimolecular reaction. Option B, you have nitrogen pentoxide. A single molecule is reacting to give form products. So, therefore, this is a unimolecular reaction. We shall also check with option C as well as option D. Option C H2 molecule is combining with Cl2 molecule. Two molecules are there. This cannot be a unimolecular reaction. Similarly, option D cannot be a unimolecular reaction. Therefore, option B is the right answer. Next question. Which of the statement is true? Option A for N is equal to 1. Bet isotherm gives the Langmuir isotherm. Option B for N is equal to 1. Bet isotherm gives Frenlich isotherm. Option C. For N is equal to 0, bet isotherm gives Langmuir isotherm. Option D. For N is equal to 2, bet isotherm gives Langmuir isotherm. Fronlich isotherm is given by X by M is equal to K into P raised to 1 by N. And Langmuir isotherm is given by P divided by V is equal to P divided by Vm plus 1 by K into Vm. Bet isotherm is given by the equation P divided by V into P0 minus P is equal to 1 divided by Vm into C plus C minus 1 divided by Vm into C. The whole term multiplied by P divided by P0. It is important to remember all the expressions for Frenlich isotherm, Langmuir isotherm and Bet isotherm. Among the four statements given for this particular question, option A is the right one. For N is equal to 1, bet isotherm gives the Langmuir isotherm. Moving to the next question. In a crystal, the atoms are located at the position of option A, maximum potential energy, option B, minimum potential energy, option C, zero potential energy, option D, infinite potential energy. Atoms are stable when attractive and repulsive forces balance with each other. This happens when the potential energy is minimum. Therefore, the answer is option B, minimum potential energy. Minimum potential energy gives more stability to the atom located in a crystal. Next question is, polydispersity index is the ratio of 
polydispersity index is the ratio of weight average molecular weight of a polymer to number average molecular weight of a polymer. Therefore, option A is the right answer. Moving to the next question. An analysis gave a result of 38.42 gram against the supposedly true value of 38 grams. The absolute error will be option A minus 0.42, option B 0.42, option C 4.2, option D 42. Absolute error is the difference between measured value and the actual value. In the given question, measured value is 38.42 gram and the actual value is 32.00 grams and the difference between these two will give us 0.42 gram. Therefore, the absolute error involved in the measurement is 0.42 and the right answer is option B. In this video, we have solved 15 questions of KSIT 2014 chemical science question paper. Thank you for watching. Press the like button and share the video if the contents provided in this video is useful to you. Please subscribe to the channel if you are watching it for the first time.